Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to round 6 of Candidates Tournament 2020 held in Russia in Yekaterinburg and today I would like to show you the game between these two gentlemen. So uh, we have Jan Nepomnashi from Russia, he's ranking 2774, so according to the Fidelist he's number 5 in the world, he's 29 years old and today he gonna play as white. And his opponent Ding Liren from China 2805. He's number three in the world and a 27 years old player uh, gonna play as black. And it was a battle between the current tournament leader, Jan Nipomniashi, uh, because he was the uh, half point ahead of another players and one of the a priori favorites to win the event, Dink Liren. He was definitely the favorite uh, together with Fabiano Caruana. And before this game, they played nine times uh, with one win each and seven draws. And the last decisive game between them was 10 years ago where Ding Liren won. So uh, pretty interesting. Let's see what happened on the board. Nepo open with e4. We have e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. So we have Rui Lopez on the board. a6, bishop on a4 and now knight f6 castle. Uh, and here bishop on e7. So closed variation. We have d3, bishop on b5, uh, bishop on b3, and now d6. Uh, a3 making a space for the for the bishop if needed, and then castle by black. We have knight c3 and knight a5 attacking the bishop. Exchanging, of course, uh, is not in the best interest of white. So bishop on a2 and bishop on a6. So this bishop already made make one, two, three, four, and preparing this was uh, five moves. So definitely good to exchange for the fresh bishop, which uh, didn't move yet. We have b4 by Nepo, bishop on a2, rook on a2, and now knight back to c3. It was, of course, under attack. We have bishop on g5, and this was played already a couple of times by Ding Liren. And uh, definitely this is one of the weakest points of Ding Liren during this tournament because so far he played the same line so other players uh, can prepare against him and he's uh, quite vulnerable uh, about that so let's see what happened we have queen on d7 bishop takes on f6 so exchanging the dark square bishop as um, the knight's gonna be better in this closed position we have bishop takes on f6 knight d5 wonderful outpost the the dream outpost for the knight and now we have a five and in this position actually Ding Liren had this position against for example uh, Magnus Carlsen and at that time it was c4 knight on e7 uh, rook c2 and then knight d5 c takes on d5 and exchanging on b4 and the game continued Ding Liren lost that game uh, however, uh, other possibility here would be knight on f6, it was also possible, and after g takes on f6, rook b2, bringing extra defender to b4, and after e takes on b4, e takes on b4, f5. This is also possible, uh, however, here, Nepo plays something in between, the same ideas, a similar line, but he changed a bit, so we have rook on b2. Uh, and okay, a takes on b4, a takes on b4, and here Ding Liren don't want to um, exchange this uh, bishop, he want to keep it, so he play bishop on d8. The rooks are now uh, disconnected, so that's uh, definitely disadvantage. We have c4, typical in this structure, and now knight on d4, uh, asking for exchanging the knights. Uh, Nepo accept that, knight on d4, e takes on d4, and now queen on c2. We have rook on e8, and now uh, Nepo don't see any counterplay for, for black so far, so he just strengthened his position, he played g3. Uh, and here we have b takes on c4 and Nepo during the conference said that he was thinking about playing uh, d takes on c4. Uh, it would be, it would be uh, probably more interesting game. So after uh, d takes on c4, this is the past pawn but it's without support. So not really strong and for example c6 
knight f4 and then rook a3 was possible uh, b5 uh, bishop g5 and after exchanging this is still playable uh, the knight can go to d5 the knight can go to d3 uh, still quite interesting but um, not very you know solid position uh, so Nepo didn't go for this line he played a more solid queen on c4 and he was asked in the interview uh, how are you playing you know so well how are you so good prepared and he said I just try to not make uh, mistakes you know so I try to play solid and if during this tournament other players try to win um, then then I, I can sometimes get some advantage and you know uh, exploit their mistakes and, and that's what happened in uh, my game so uh, that's his the strategy for this tournament and he's very merciless about that so c6 was one of these moves, risky move, where Ding Liren want to create some uh, unbalanced position, uh, which is totally unclear. Uh, we have knight on f4 by Nepo, bishop on g5 attacking the knight, um, and Nepo don't want to, of course, exchange that. Uh, his king would be very vulnerable. Knight on g2, he was thinking about this move, but it ended with knight on e2 with an attack on d4. Uh, we have d5 attacking the queen and this pawn and of course uh, Nepo has to do something about that he play e takes on d5 c takes on d5 and now queen on b3 and what do we know about this position that blacks have the problems with creating some counterplay and white already have this passed pawn so black has to react somehow to that uh, Ding Liren uh, tried to create some counterplay, so he played h5. And now we have b5, h4, b6, and h3. So this is the position. But uh, also very interesting in the interview where, uh, in this position where before pushing b6, Nepo was thinking, uh, okay, knight on d4, I can take knight on d4 because bishop on f6 uh, do nothing to me, queen b4, I'm totally fine here, just exchange the pieces so black probably would equalize. However, he missed something like this, queen on g4, this definitely he didn't miss, but uh, what happened later, knight on c2, and now black can't just take, you know, uh, the rook, the exchange, because the queen is hanging, that's the problem, but queen f3 can be played, and now this is so crazy line, h3 and checkmate is coming, so white have to do something about that, so for example, h3, h takes on g3, Knight on e1 attacking um, the queen, so queen has to be moved, but first g takes on f2. Now a rook can be moved to f2, so it's not under attack anymore, but then queen g3 with check, rook g2, queen e3 with check, rook g on f2, and now bishop on d4, this is the problem. Uh, knight can go on f3 attacking the bishop, bishop um, c5 with attack on the queen, now queen d2 uh, exchanging, knight d2, and now rook a on b8. Uh, and black actually could stand much better for example king on g2 just you know uh, get out of this pin but then bishop on f2 rook on f2 and rook on b5 so uh, black of course is winning with extra exchange and extra pawn uh, so nepo in this position actually uh, was wrong he couldn't take on d4 uh, so luckily for him he didn't go for this line he played b6 uh, we had h3 and now king h1 very interesting move and you can actually learn that structure if you have the the problems with the pawn here uh, what you can do is knight on g one and this knight actually uh, attacks h3 pawn so treat to to take um, the pawn so the queen has to um, defend it uh, constantly and also from here controls very important square on f3 so queen can't just you know jump to uh, f3 to checkmate the white king and also uh, this pawn on d3 is very important because controls another uh, square so uh, it's kind of the fortress then 
And here Ding Liren play a rook e on b1. Uh, however, Nepo during the conference he showed that uh, black could have very very brilliant move rook on e2. This is so great move. And look at this rook on e2, and now queen on g4, uh, threatening checkmate. And it's almost unstoppable. If f3, then actually queen f3. Can you see that? Now rook f3 is the only move, so rook f3 and now rook a1 and white can only throw the pieces and of course that would be a checkmate. So that's that's quite funny, but after queen on g4, actually queen on d5 is possible. The only defending move, uh, not defending the e2 uh, rook, but defending f3, which is very important, but also attacking the rook on a8. And now black has nothing to do, queen e2, queen a8, now king h7 and queen e4. Uh, so attacking the king and the queen, so queen have to be exchanged. Queen e4, d takes on e4 and of course white is winning with the support of the rook. Uh, it's of course winning. So very interesting idea, but sadly it doesn't work. This is why rook e on b8. This was played by Ding Liren. We have rook f on b1 and look at this support. So this piece is support uh, the passed pawn. Uh, and here actually what black should do is rook on b7. Uh, this is the most solid move and uh, what white can play, it's it's not much here. Uh, queen b5, queen f5 with this threat of checkmate, it's still in the board, always in the board. And now, for example, knight on d4, uh, queen e5, knight a2, rook a on b8 and uh, black would just handle that because uh, bishop can go on d8. Queen can go on f6 and now uh, threatening the checkmate and attacking for the fourth time this pawn. So this pawn uh, would be lost and of course that would be totally equal game uh, and that would be a draw. However, uh, Ding Liren actually play first bishop on d8 and uh, that is the problem. We have queen on b5 by Nepo, but during the interview he said he wanted to play b7 because that would be more solid and he was calculating like, okay, I play b7, rook a7, knight g1, now, you know, keeping the pressure on h3 and build my fortress here. Uh, and after rook a on b7, now exchange the queen for two rooks. Uh, and this position would be pretty good. Now a bishop is hanging because if the queen is moved, queen has to move somewhere. Uh, then white actually can go to the last rank. Uh, you know, double the rooks there and pick up the, the bishop. So something like queen on d6 would have to be played. But then uh, knight on h3. And this is completely winning for white. Uh, white gonna double the rooks on the seventh rank and that's gonna be a disaster. And of course, this bishop is, is a very bad bishop because of the d4 pawn. So bishop would be uh, limited and uh, knight would, would not. So that would be much better for white, of course. Uh, however, uh, after knight on g1, he freaked out that black has something like g5 and then g4 and then f5, f4, and he's scared there are some tricks and his fortress gonna fall. So uh, he didn't play that. And this is why he played queen on b5, want to exchange the queens. And very important moment of the game, Ding Liren have to decide uh, what to play. If he just play, you know, exchange the queens, that's very, very bad. It looks like, okay, rook on b5, rook on b7. It looks like uh, black just gonna pick up this pawn. But the problem is rook d5. So picking up another pawns, uh, black can try to defend some. But now uh, pawn on h3 is falling, rook a6. Now rook d on b5. <laughs> and uh, bishop d8, but buying some time, of course, knight h3, now exchanging the, the rooks, uh, bishop on b5, so definitely not good line for black. This is why uh, black has to play something else, try to exploit this f3 weakness for now. 
So uh, queen on g4 was played. However, queen on f5 would be much better. And I will show you why. Because this queen, uh, if check on a8, actually after moving the king, can pick up the pawn on f7. Uh, which is quite important because from there can control this f3 but also can take on d5 and from there control f3. So uh, th that's pretty interesting. So what white could play here is knight on d4 uh, and then a queen can move to g4 because now this doesn't work anymore because the knight is hanging. So queen on d5 would have to be played to put the control on, on f3 but now bishop on f6 uh, rook on b4, that would be uh, quite tricky, bishop on d4, rook on d4, and now rook on b6, winning this pawn, and now the <laughs> situation is quite complicated. Uh, if the rook is taken, then we would have a checkmate here, and if the rook takes uh, the queen then we would have checkmate here so uh, that's totally unplayable this is why rook e1 queen c8 and this would be the position uh probably draw uh yes white have one extra pawn but uh Th that's nearly impossible to win. So uh, this would be the best idea actually for for Ding Lir and play queen on f5. Queen on g4 was played by Ding Liren. Uh, and here Nepo said during the interview that he didn't know what to play because almost everything wins. So for example, he said knight on g1 clearly wins because uh, of bishop on b6. And now queen on c6. Now the bishop is three times under attack. So rook a6, queen d5, and now g6. And white have uh, some interesting trick here. Can take this bishop because after rook a on b6, rook takes on b6, rook on b6. This is the problem that is a check. So king g7 winning the rook and with extra knight, of course, this is uh, winning. So uh, this is what Nepo could play, for example. And he was right about that. That was winning. Another um, option, the best option here would be queen on e8. This is what I mentioned before, because now um, f7 is under attack. So king on h7, queen on f7. Rook on b7, trying to deflect the queen. If queen uh, takes the rook, then of course we would have checkmate, so it's uh, impossible. So queen on d5, still controlling this f3. And now rook a on b8, but now f3. Uh, queen on g5, trying to exchange the queens. Queen g5, bishop on g5, now knight on g1. Bishop on d8 trying to exchange uh, this pawn, uh, that's of course very important, but black actually would lose another pawn on h3, and after rook on b6, rook on b6, rook on b6, uh, exchanging the pieces, this is of course winning for white with two extra pawns. So Nepo was right. Knight on g1 is winning, uh, queen on e8 is winning. He chose another winning way, Queen on d5, also uh, protecting f3. But there are some issues here. So we had in the game rook on a5, moving the rook um, on the fifth rank. Of course, it can't be taken because of checkmate. We had queen on c6, so uh, queen still want to stay and control f3. But there is one problem and try to pause the video and find this problem actually i mean uh, find the way for black uh, to draw the game but watch out because for finding such a move you should be disqualified okay while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the move you are looking for is actually rook on b6 yeah, believe me or not, but after rook on b6, queen on e2, and now rook b8, and this is the move which is impossible to find by Nepo, rook on e5. So this is the sequence. And what's the idea here? Of course, the idea is checkmate on e1. 
okay and and white can do nothing about that uh, look at this position white can do nothing so rook on d8 with check king h7 and now checkmate is coming and you have to do something you cannot play something like you know queen on a8 because you have a checkmate so um the only way actually is sacrifice the rook on h8 and you can do it now or you can do it for example after rook on g1 it's possible it's it doesn't doesn't really matter it's very similar so queen on f2 and now you can sacrifice now but you still have time so you can play something like rook on f8 uh, but after rook on e2 now you have to start to act <laughs> so rook on h8 king h8 now queen c8 with check king h7 queen h3 and now there is no checkmate king g8 and that would be a perpetual except black want to play something like king on g6 but it's still not enough because we have rook on f1 and now rook on e1 and it looks very very bad for black so white still have to actually uh you know check the black king so queen on g4 <laughs> king h7 queen h4 king g6 and that would be a perpetual this this already perpetual so if you don't know this uh, that that's the, that's the perpetual usually you can do it on this um, diagonal and the king have to jump between these squares and in this case in this case actually if king f6 it's losing for black so black uh, have to be happy with the draw they had the losing game and they can't win but they still can lose if they play something king f6 this is losing because queen d4 and look how crazy is that queen attacks the king and also another queen but this queen actually is pinned okay and this rook is actually also pinned so it's a pin of the pin and it's double attack at the same time so uh, pretty crazy stuff here uh, black have to play something like king on e7 queen f2 and of course white is winning but okay uh, of course in this position that would be that would be just a draw okay so uh, this is the way uh, how in this position it can be drawn so uh, rook on b6 taking the knight and now a rook on e5 this is just insane but ding liren didn't find it maybe he's scared to be disqualified so he play a rook on c5 attacking the queen queen of course still can't uh, take the rook because uh, of the checkmate idea here so we have queen on e8 now with check king h7 and now queen on f7 doesn't work so that would be mistake by white because rook f5 now and now <laughs> checkmate is coming and black have to just sacrifice the queen for the rook and that would be uh, losing nepo of course didn't go for that uh, he play a knight on g1 winning move and here we have rook on b6 uh, with some sneaky idea however uh, black probably could have better move like uh, queen on g6 or queen on f5 so for example queen f5 with the idea of winning uh, d3 pawn and you know uh, creating some counterplay with the past pawn so for example uh, b7 queen on d3 and now queen on f7 Seven. bishop f6 consolidating the position here and now queen on e6 uh, not letting white to you know uh, checkmate of course that would be very dangerous and now queen f5 so can exchange the queens queen f5 rook f5 and now rook c2 with the idea you know of of winning the rook here uh, but d3 rook c8 and now bishop on e5 uh, defending uh, and here f4 and now bishop can be moved but also d2 idea is interesting and now uh, <laughs> rook on b8 can be taken but better for white actually is to play bishop on c5 and now rook on b7 the last try of course it can't be taken because of the promotion so uh, rook on d1 now rook on e7 um, f takes on e5 and uh, yeah that would be that would be all just exchanging the pieces and white are with 
extra knight of course winning so uh, this is just one of the very complicated lines and and i think uh, ding liren could try to go for this uh, d3 and create this pass pawn uh, maybe he could find uh, some better way than me uh, but here we have a rook on b6 with also very sneaky idea because now after a rook on b6 bishop on b6 and now if white takes on b6 look at this rook c1 this is totally crazy because now white gonna fight for a draw uh, because now checkmate is coming again so uh, queen e4 would have to be played and after queen e4 and d takes on e4 d3 and you know this, this is totally crazy now rook on d6 rook on d1 and what's the situation here king can't move because uh, g2 is taken of course by the pawn and also uh, the knight can't move because it's pinned so this is totally a crazy situation f4 and white can try to create something but it's not enough f6 even with the with the past pawn it's not enough f takes on e5 f takes on e5 king g8 now e6 king f8 and rook d7 and this is draw because this rook gonna stay on d7 forever and just you know take care of the of the pawn on d2 and if black just just move the rook then of course the pawn gonna be taken and uh, yeah so so black gonna stay uh, this way white not gonna activate the knight not gonna activate the king uh, because it's just impossible so this is the draw that was the trap of ding liren and of course uh, nepo is too experienced to fall into the trap he played queen on d8 uh, and now we have rook on b2 rook on b2 rook c1 very similar situation now uh, this is the threat of course again the problem is queen on h4 queen h4 g takes on h4 and rook on d1 uh, so similar idea even worse pawn structure but it's uh, one difference f3 so powerful move that ding liren just resigned the game and what is the idea if black actually takes the the pawn then knight can jump and takes on h3 so black can try to bring the king to the game for example king h6 but the rook before and this pawn gonna fall and all the game uh, gonna fall if rook on d3 then of course knight h3 and there are no more tricks here rook f3 king g2 rook d3 defending the pawn but it doesn't really matter knight on g5 king h5 and uh, knight f3 defending the pawn attacking the this pawn for the second time and of course um, that winning <laughs> for uh, white so this is why in this position uh, ding liren resigned the game and i would like to show you the standings after round six so here we go we have Yanni Pomniashi plus two that means one point ahead of Maxime Vachiel Lagraf who has three and a half points and and then we have Wang Hao Fabiano Caruana uh, the main favorite and Alexander Grishuk and Anish Giri three points so 50 percent uh, and Kirill Alexienko and Ding Liren only two points very surprising that Ding Liren has only two points uh, Anish Giri won today with Kirill Alexeyenko that was also a crazy game uh, it was probably a draw but he play with uh, you know uh, three pawns against two pawns and the Knights it was very very tricky uh, it probably should be a draw but Anish Giri found a way how to win that uh, and yeah so he has uh, three points and so far only Alexander Grishuk actually draw all the games so um, Anish Giri you know lost one and won today so that's the final standings if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike leave the comment what do you think about Ding Liren how how is he doing it's definitely something wrong with him and Jan Nepomniashi uh, he resigned from the Tata Steel tournament in Vegan Z and now doing so good job here because he wanted to prepare for the candidates tournament and it seems like he's doing this right way uh, okay so if you don't want to miss any other games from the candidates tournament 2020 press subscribe smash the bell button and 
Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.